Welcome back everyone and a very happy Friday to you. Today we'll be continuing to compare angles in our maths learning but this time we'll be trying to spot angles which are larger than a right angle. Quick check though, before we get there, what did we look at last lesson? Excellent, we've all remembered that very well. Angles which are smaller than a right angle. And they're called acute. That's right, because they're gucci gucci cute. Cool, okay. And today we are learning about angles which are larger than right angles. Good. We'll get to what they're called in a moment, these angles. But for now, I'd like you to have a look at our in focus for today. We're looking for any angles which are larger or bigger, thank you, Freddie, than a right angle in these letters. Now I think it's important to remind ourselves before we start what a right angle looks like. I reckon we might be able to move on from using our right angle finders today. So what I'd like you to do instead is I'd like to ask you to make an L with your thumb and forefinger. Once you've got a perfect L just let me, that's it, nice and straight. You've got yourself a rough right angle. The other thing we need to recap quickly is that here we are looking just for the interior angles again. Where two straight lines meet, we're looking for the angle on the inside, not the outside. Five minutes then, looking at the letters in the word England from our in focus. How many angles can you spot which are larger than right angles? You can draw it out again with a ruler to help you if you like. Okay, let's see what you found. Let's start with E. Fabian, what angles did you find in E? Aha, all the interior angles in an E are right angles, just as in the picture. Good, Fabian. And N, right, there are two interior angles in N. And as Ravi is showing us, they are both acute angles. That's right, because they're smaller than right angles. So now we come to A. The angles in the top part of the A are all smaller than right angles, as we saw last lesson, and so must be acute angles, right? Okay, good. But the angles in the lower part of the A are larger than right angles. And we call angles that are larger than right angles obtuse angles. Try and remember it by using a big, low voice obtuse angles are larger than right angles or 90 degrees and acute angles are smaller than right angles or 90 degrees. Okay, now a competition for you and your parents, pets and partners. For this activity, you'll need a couple of strips of paper or cardboard of the same length and something to fasten them with, preferably a split pin but a paper clip or even blue tack would do. Now, you're going to take turns making different angles using your strips of paper and the other person will need to say whether you've made an acute angle, a right angle or an obtuse angle. See you in five. Okay, how did you get on? Anyone managed to beat your parents, pets and partners? Excellent, well done. Now that you've got somewhat of an understanding of what an obtuse angle is, I'd like you to draw one. I want you to draw it using two lines coming together to make one angle. Two minutes, off you go.
hopefully you ended up with something like this. The, the angle is larger than a right angle, or 90 degrees, and so it is an obtuse angle. And we mark it again with a plain arc, not a square. Okay, again, we've done number one already. Question two has given us two angles, A and B. One of these angles is smaller than 90 degrees, or a right angle, and one is larger. That's right. A is larger than a right angle, so it's an obtuse angle. Therefore, we know that B is smaller so it's Gucci Gucci and acute and acute angle. Now have a go at question three with your parents, pets and partners. Which angles are acute? Which angles are right angles? And which are obtuse? Go. Okay then, let's quickly whiz through those. Angle C is obtuse. Angle D is a right angle, good. Angle E is an acute angle, a teeny tiny one too. Angle F, now, angle F is tricky. Well done if you spotted that it is actually ever so slightly bigger than a right angle. So is, in fact, obtuse. Angle G is bigger again, so obtuse. And H is not quite a right angle again, but this time it's smaller, so it's an acute angle. Perfect. OK, now just take a moment with your parents, pets and partners to talk about any you weren't sure about and see if you can work through any mistakes before we go on. Okay, now you're going to be having a go at worksheet six today. There are four pages to work through today. Before you go off, I want you to look quickly at question two and three. I want to remind you that we're only looking at the interior or inside angles for these questions. Okay, good luck, and I'll see you after to go through your answers. Okay then, question one. State whether the angle shown in each figure is an acute angle, a right angle, or an obtuse angle, just like we were doing in our guided practice. So, angle A. Yeah, it's smaller than a uh, right angle there, so we've got an acute angle. Uh, angle B is bigger than a right angle, so it's obtuse. C, the angle they've marked out there with their arc is bigger, again, than a right angle, so obtuse. D, they've marked a right angle. Now, they've been a bit clever there by marking it with an arc so that you don't necessarily know without checking that it's a right angle. You could have marked yours with a square if you had had a go. Um, e, the angle they've marked out is an acute angle because it's smaller than a right angle. And F, again, is an obtuse angle. Now I'm going to whiz through this one. You were asked to look at the letters shown below and write down the correct letters in the table. So we know C's got no angle because it hasn't got any straight lines. And an angle is formed when two straight lines join. Um, no obtuse angle was V, F, E, H, Z, N and W. The only letter with one obtuse angle was Y. And... There were three letters with two obtuse angles. Those were A, as we saw in our Let's Learn earlier. X has two obtuse angles. And K also has two obtuse angles.
Well done if you've got all of those. Some of those were quite tricky, especially that K there. Okay, question three asked you to mark all the obtuse angles, just like we did for acute angles yesterday in the shapes below, and then write down how many you found. So A, shape A had two obtuse angles. Shape B had five obtuse angles. That's a pentagon there. All of those angles are bigger than right angles. Um, C had two obtuse angles. D had one obtuse angle. E had two obtuse angles, quite tricky to spot there because they were small um, in the picture. And F had zero obtuse angles.